Hey guys, Christy here from The Self Life, and today I'm gonna to be talking about one of the top questions I get as a HoneyBook Pro. They say, I know HoneyBook can do so much more than I'm using it for, and I really want to maximize it. Well, that's where automations come in. So this video, I'm going to do an intro to HoneyBook automations and just show you how to create a few simple automations and workflows. So let's dive in. So let's talk HoneyBook automations. This is really meant to be an introduction to automation. So I want to show you really just what the automation section purpose is, and then just give you a couple ideas to inspire you of how you can apply automations to your specific business. So first, before we dive in, let's talk about what automations even are. So this is where, like it says, you can queue up a custom sequence of steps to keep your client process moving along even when you're logged out. So a couple things, you can create multiple different automations, right? So you can create different automations depending on if it's an inquiry or if it's you're onboarding a client and you can add these at different times along the pipeline, but you can also add completely unique automations for specific service types. So say you're a photographer and you wanna have an, a separate automation for wedding clients, engagement clients, and family portraits. And in those automations, you have a brochure that's specific to each of those different things, right? You wanna showcase your wedding clients, you wanna showcase your family clients, etc. And then you also want the email verbiage to reflect that service. I can't wait to shoot your wedding day. I can't wait to have our family photo session. It's really great ways to be able to automate your process, but still make it feel custom to that person. Okay. So that's just a little inspiration on what you can use these automations for. Now let's talk about this button right here. Automate via contact form. So this is what you're gonna be able to, these are your project types. And when you see your contact form, let me head to desilvalife.com. You'll see this is our contact form embedded on our website. So when the person fills out, what type of project are you looking for? We have a couple different options, ClickUp Roadmap, ClickUp Setup, HoneyBook Setup, Hourly Consulting, or other. So what this button is doing here is from your contact form, if you link the project type, then when they fill it out, this automation will automatically trigger. So you can also say, I just want to have one default automation that's for the contact form. And maybe that triggers, hey, check on this inquiry and then apply the correct automation. But this is where if you want to automate it from the contact form, you're going to connect your project type and then that will also be done in the project settings. So if I go into here, company settings, preferences, this project type is the type of projects you do in your business. And then you can link that to the contact form. Let me actually show you how to do that. In my templates, contact forms right here, you'll see this will be defaulted but also if you added another question, let's say um, drop down, and then you would link this to the project type here. But that question was already added. So that is that portion. So let's go back into the automations and pop into one of them. Or actually, let's start one from scratch and just talk about the different triggers. So I'm just gonna call this test automation. And let's talk about these actions or triggers. So you can do a few different things here. You can send an email, create a task, send a file or send a smart file. So because currently as I'm recording this video, we're still in the transition from legacy files to smart files. You may or may not have access to smart files yet, but one day we will be transitioned over. This is why you still have these two options here. But if you're transitioning to smart files, then you're always gonna wanna click send smart file. So let's go ahead and click send smart file. You can choose, so let's do um, all and just choose one of these client onboarding questionnaire. So you can choose the action type, right? 
Then you would choose the template. This is if I'm using the template trigger. If it was just a task, you would just write the t what the task is. Then you're gonna choose which email you want to send with that. And then you can also preview and edit that email as well. Now note, if you ever wanna make a long lasting change to that email, go ahead and edit it in the template section. If you want to just change what that email says for this specific automation, that is when you would edit it in the automation. Another key thing I wanna note here as well is once an automation is attached to a client project, you can edit it and make any changes that you want to the emails, delete, add steps, etc., and it's never going to affect the original automation templates or any of the other automation templates that are attached to projects. So just wanted to let you know about that, very important. And then you're gonna say, when is this thing gonna happen? So zero minutes, hours, days, weeks, before or after, automation is activated, project end date, project date, contract assigned, questionnaire submitted, invoice paid in full. Go through all of these and look at the different triggers so you can see, okay, when would this be, make sense to trigger this automation? Maybe you wanna send a welcome email when your client pays their first payment or all the signatures are collected. We're working with a venue right now to set up their HoneyBook and their automations, and they said, we only send the welcome packet once every single person, fiance, main person, uh, the person who's paying, pays, all signs the contract. So this is gonna be unique to you. And then this button right here, super important. Do you wanna require approval before sending, meaning that this is not just gonna automatically go, but either you wanna double check before you click send, or you wanna make any edits to that email before you go ahead and send it over. And I'll give you a couple examples of this and show you how this shows up in the task section. So that is the triggers, right? And you could see, say I put create task, then I would just write, send client gift. This happens, let's say, one week before the project because I want it to show up on their doorstep before we kick off. Um, so one week before project date, and you'll see those triggers there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So that's just introduction into the different triggers that you can do. Now let's walk through just a sample automation so you can get your wheels turning about how to apply this to your business. Okay, so here's a sample automation. Let's walk through it quickly. And another thing here, in the emails, I highly recommend creating a naming convention. I typically do offer name and then the number of the email, so 010203, et cetera, and then what it's called. So you can see here, offer name, email two, follow up number one, brochure. Offer name three, follow up number two, after the brochure. So. Let's just quickly walk through this automation so you can get some inspiration on how to apply this to your business. Okay, so this automation would be automatically applied by the project type, so that offer name, when someone inquires. So say it was someone's inquiring for your wedding photography offer. That would be this automation that's triggering. So from there, it would be the brochure that I wanna send them with the contact form autoresponder. So thank you so much for reaching out to work with us. Super excited about the potential of serving you. Attaches my service and pricing guide. If you'd like to move forward and chat, please book your free consultation call here. In the editor right now, this doesn't show up as highlighted, but in the actual email it does. And this links to the HoneyBook scheduler. Looking forward to it. And then here's the button for the brochure. So this sends automatically as soon as they inquire. Then I have two follow-up emails. 
This happens 48 hours after the previous step is complete. So I sent the brochure. Now this is approved before sending because what if they have responded? HoneyBook won't know that. So that's why you have this as approved before sending. So you could say, have I been contacting this person or have they looked at the brochure or not and have kind of ghosted or maybe it just fell through the cracks. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and send this over or no, actually I don't need this because they booked a call. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just delete the follow-ups. So 48 hours after that, check in and then 24 hours after that or maybe you want to do seven days after that, do another check-in. Then there's a step to have a consult call with clients waiting for you because after that's done, there's going to be a task that says, okay, you had the consult call, so now let's draft and send the proposal if it's a good fit. After you check off that you sent the proposal, then you're going to go ahead and set, have a couple follow-ups after the proposal. Hey, did you get a chance to see the proposal? Do you have any questions? Maybe it's, hey, your proposal is expiring. So again, you can decide when those triggers are and if you do want to have these emails just waiting for you. Another beautiful thing about approved before sending is you can add personal details as well. We get such a wide variety of clients. Some say, I want every single thing automated for me. I don't want to like touch an email while others are like I really love that personal touch and I feel like I get more clients when I send personalized things so we make little places to highlight and say insert personal details so it can be more personal to them so follow-up emails after the proposal then 14 days after that just a reminder to archive the lead if there's no response and then jump right down here, what if they do sign the contract or pay the first payment, then let's go ahead and send the welcome email. With the welcome email, maybe you have an onboarding questionnaire as well and a smart file or legacy file that you want to attach to this and say, welcome, I'm so excited to serve you in your business or be your wedding photographer, whatever it is, attached is etc. Please fill it out so we can kick off our journey together. Um, and then you could also automate things like hype emails, 90, 60, 30 days, one day, two weeks, whatever it is before the project. Hey, I'm so excited about our upcoming project, etc., etc. Or we've done things like send style guides if you're a photographer or if you're a venue send um, vendor information right so here's a form to fill in all your vendors and provide insurance documents or maybe you're a DJ and we want to go ahead and get your song list think about your process of okay what are the things I need to gather from my client and can I stick them in this automation to go ahead and send for me X amount of days or weeks before our actual project. And then another amazing thing, automating your testimonial requests. I feel like testimonial, asking for a testimonial can always be a little awkward, even though people want to give you rating reviews. So having it automated for you literally takes that thought out of your brain and you're not going to forget. So send them a testimonial request. Either you can attach a testimonial form or you can attach you know, your Google review link, wherever you want to get those testimonials, link it in an email or send them a form. And then you can do that the day after the project, 14 days later, eight weeks if you need to deliver their wedding gallery, et cetera. It's really amazing. And then just the last one, move the project to complete or archive. We actually got someone recently who also was a newborn photographer and said, I want to send them something, you know, maybe 11 months after their photo shoot that says, I know your baby is turning one and I do these cake smashes or things like that. That's a perfect thing to put in automations. You can literally do that, say, 48 or 47 weeks after the project date and that could be automated because you're like hey your baby's birthday is coming up and that's just saying it because you had your newborn session 11 months ago so that is a walkthrough of an example automation i hope that just opened your mind a little bit to what is possible with honeybook automations they truly are life-changing now I just want to show you a quick thing about applying them and then where the tasks actually are gonna live 
Okay, so here in this test automation, I've just added two quick things. You can see how this triggers. And what I actually wanna do is I showed you the thing about the uh, project types automating from the contact form, but I actually wanna show you how to apply an automation manually and then talk a little bit about these tasks. So here I am in John Smith's project, right? And I wanna add this automation. So I'm gonna come down on the right side and click add automation. And then I'm going to manually add this test automation. So I'm gonna click quick apply. You can also customize and apply and delete any steps that don't apply to this specific person. So I'm gonna click quick apply and okay. And now this is added, right? So now I'm gonna see the task check new inquiry. I'm gonna see it inside John Smith's project, but I'm also going to see it in this task section as well, right? So two tasks due today, check out new inquiry, John Smith. So then you can go to the project and go in here and see anything that you need. Do you need any information to do this? And then I'm gonna go ahead and check this off. So this is done and now the next automation is gonna trigger. So I'm gonna refresh this because the next step was set to trigger immediately after the first one was done. So let's go back and now you'll see two tasks due today. So if I come into here, now this is gonna be an email. So let me let this load. So now you're gonna see John Smith approve email, welcome email. So from here, I can either just send it. If I click this, then you just click approve, or I can view slash edit, edit any information in here. Hold on, let me refresh, there we go. Edit any information that I need to, and then click approve and send now. After I do that, it's gonna be in John Smith's portal. I could pop in there, but that is how you do that. So if I go back to John Smith's project, now you'll see this test automation. One more note, you'll see this email in there as well. One more note I want to make is that you cannot have more than one automation on a project at any given time. So if I did want to add a new automation, I would have to go ahead, delete this one, and then add a new one in. And that is it. I hope that this video was helpful for you and just gave you a little more um, idea of what HoneyBook automations are and some inspiration on how you can use them. So I hope this video was helpful for you as you dive in and get started working on HoneyBook automations for your business. If you have any questions about HoneyBook, make sure to drop them in the comments below. Check out our 50% off your first year coupon code. It's the bomb.com and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you want all the HoneyBook tutorials and make sure you keep up on our new systems and organizations videos. With that, thank you so much for watching.